Hot House of Truth brings to you in an apostolic The gospel without the power of God is not the gospel at all. It's a vessel of truth as a vessel. As an apostolic minister to break yokes, break mindsets, mindsets, break anything that needs to be broken, Father. As you break us and mold us and mend us into your, into your chosen vessels, Father. Father, we just ask you to fill, to speak, to do, Father, because we need a fresh word. We need to hear from heaven today, God. We don't want to hear from man. We don't want to hear from anything that comes from the flesh, God. We want to hear from the Spirit of the living God. We don't want to hear from religion. We don't want to hear from false visions. We don't want to hear from anything that's not of you, God. And we break off every lying spirit that would come and intimidate us. Every spirit of Jezebel would come in and try to corrupt us and make us fearful of man or anything. Amen. We break it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Pro Sarabashi, no, no man by the flesh. No, no man by the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5, 16, and Marlene is going to be preaching a message on this coming soon here. Wherefore, henceforth, know no man after the flesh. You, though, who have known Christ after the flesh, yet know henceforth, know him no more. <coughs> know no man after the flesh. It is in this message, but that just goes so. we got to stop looking at each other by the flesh. Amen. Oh, we do that, man. We don't think we can do anything. Look at the spirit of a man. We all still got stuff we're going through. None of us has arrived. Okay. And we got to break off pride and know, hey, you know what? We need each other. And religion ain't going to help us. The only thing religion does is change our clothes, our dirty garments. The kingdom of God changes our hearts. And by that, we change the world. <coughs> and the devil knows that. And those that want to have a heart change, those that want to walk in the kingdom, think the enemy is going to bring fear on your life at all costs. And you, it's up to you to overcome. And it's up to you to refresh the vision. It's up to you, me, us, because we all get in the pit. We all, if we don't speak the word of God and remember who he is and what he is and what he's told us and what as a group and a personalized and my, vi my, my message today is on envision your vision. Because, you know, the Lord takes us real deep and we get in a place where He's like, right away, because when you look to the natural, you don't think. If we look to our own natural self, we can't do nothing. But He will bring us there. He will do it. And the Lord in Habakkuk 2, 2 through 3. And the Lord answered me and he said, Write the vision and make it plain on the tables, that he may run that readeth it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. All right. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. See, what I've been realizing, a lot of people are running with their own visions. All right. A lot of people have been running with their own revelation, their own or, or someone else's false vision because they've been looking at men by the flesh, by a title, by the name pastor, by the name this, by the name that. Not been running by the spirit that will enlighten you to the vision, yeah. the holy, the heavenly vision of God. Amen. No, no man after the flesh. So that's the problem in America. We're so bound up by religion that we can't, we can't have any vision. And we get stuck. Where are we stuck? In the wilderness. <clears throat> Powerless. As I said before, the gospel without the power is not the gospel at all. Amen. Actually, it's, it's <laughs> defilement to God. To talk about Jesus and not represent Him is hypocrisy. <clears throat> At the highest level. Oh, who do you think you are? Well, hey, you know what? I might not be walking in the fullness of the power, but I'm trying to, and I'm not going to forget it just because it ain't happening, and I'm not going to start praising people that are, 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 are not walking in the power of God and not speaking about it. Because whatever you leave behind or you don't speak about, you can surely know there's no vision about it. Okay. 
This is three categories of people. And listen, it's not about any. We all have issues. Whatever. This is going on YouTube, whatever. This is, but there is a purpose. And then there is a plan. And remember, we just heard that song. There's a whistle in His will. Hallelujah. And we got to let go of all the religion and realize that there's a heavenly vision. And the heavenly vision is God's vision. And it's in this word too. And He's doing something. And he's not doing 10,000 things. Okay. In the body of Christ, we, we have three categories of people. People who just do what they feel whenever they feel. Mm. Show up anytime. Sometimes they're on fire and sometimes they're not. It's distracted by other things. Always seeking rest but finding none. Mm. Second group of people. Who are everywhere and, and a lot of stuff, all God stuff even, good stuff, involved here, involved there, never fully committing to one vision. And have so many in a prayer movement here and over here and over this and doing this and speaking about this. I mean, they're so involved in so many different people's vision, they can't fully commit to anything wow. of God. That's God good. gave me this That's good. last That's night. Good. And there are these types of people who say they they have um, do this and what I I meant to they will put forth and then there's this type of people that God is looking for those type of people that grab a vision one vision it's not about them it's not about micromanage it's not about you know the you know we're here or we're there or we're that doesn't bring any power all that does. It's, it, it, it's all selfish, satif uh, uh, selfish, satisfies our flesh. And God showed me this in this message we're going to see. It says, these are, God's looking for these people who will commit and put forth all their effort, all their finances, all their time, and be loyal. And these are the people that will find rest. Amen. It's like we're doing a lot of things, but Jesus says, repent from dead works. Mm. And as I get in this message, as I'm listening to that song, and as I'm hearing this, it's like there's only two Joshua and Caleb's. There's ten other people. There's ten other brothers and sisters. And you're, you're constantly trying to bring them into the promised land, but God ain't called them. Okay. They don't believe. See. Let it go. Amen. Give up. All this striving, these dead works, all this phone calls, all the things we're doing on the side that are taking all of our time. And we got no time to, to really focus on Amen. what in God is doing with you in your life right now. Amen. It can be family. It can be your job. It can be because not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. Preach. Amen. And that's it. Amen. And, and it's funny. People come to a meeting here. It's like God's here every week. It's like the special speaker comes and God moves. But man, they'll go all the way okay. to... And I said, you don't have to go there. We got a meeting. He said, oh, no, we're going. I believe God's going to do something. You know, Steve Hill died. And I didn't want to do it. And, and the Lord told me to tell. I should have, but a whole group of people went. And the Lord said, tell them, let the dead bury the dead. Okay. And I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, what? And like, they went. I, I just met someone last night. They went, oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I walked in the place. But, of course, you know what we do? Oh, but I had a divine appointment. We always make an excuse. I had a divine appointment. I talked to him. Well, you don't think God could have used someone else to talk to them there? Okay. You know, and they were always because, and then someone else I saw, I said, you're not to go to this country. You're not supposed to go there. It's not your husband. This is not. And then you, all of a sudden, but they go. It's not the vision. A week later, I get a phone call. I get 10 texts. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm going to do this. And I, I, I said, oh, I'm going to got myself in a pig. This, I'm not supposed to be. Again, it's like, but they knew that. Okay. They're flesh. Okay. We need to let this word come forth in our hearts and break us free from all of us and just find out what is God really doing. He's not Amen. doing 10,000 things. Amen. Amen. And then we'll find rest. And then, and through this, he's going to kill your flesh. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to do it. He's promised. 
But and if you're hearing this message right now via YouTube or anything, God led you. You're here for a reason. Amen. You've been chosen. It's not just for coincidence sake. Proverbs 29 says, Alethe says this, where there is no vision, okay. the people perish. Jeez. If I walked up in the room and asked everybody, what's your vision that the Lord gave you? If He hasn't given you one, He might have an assignment for the time, but there's only heavenly visions and it takes a lot of people. Joshua and Caleb took all of that next generation over with them. They, and who died in the wilderness? Moses. Because they Stop believing God. Now let's go here. But the vision is a heavenly one from above. And it's not a Babylonian vision. It's not a pastoral church. God's not given a, a, a vision to an out of order church. Okay. Some man found out his calling and did things and people loved it. But you know what? There's no power. Why? Because it's not God's vision. God's vision, you know what? You're going to find out in a few minutes what it is. And you see, if people would get... When God's calling us to do something, it's not going to be easy. It's not easy to be crucified or flesh. It's not easy to let the Lord bring that death in our life that we, we that He can live. It's not easy to be delivered from rejection. It's not easy to be delivered from intimidation. It's not easy, but He hasn't called us to do anything easy. That's what I'm tired right. of. These. That's not His vision. Those places are people that decided they want to follow God in their own terms. Okay. And God is looking for a people that are willing and ready to take the land. But first, they got to let God take the land in their own body, their own Amen. temple. Good word, good word. So we got all this confusion. We got all these people preaching on TV. And we want to hear this. And we hear that. And oh, it's like, what is that? It's a spirit of confusion. And God is not, and then, but there's the people, even in your lives, even your young, they are unbelievers. Don't wait on them to go in the promised land. Just go. All right. And maybe later God will have some mercy and they won't die in the wilderness. Thank you, Jesus. But if you keep trying to do and bring everybody where God ain't called them or ordained them to go yet, you're going to be swallowed up right there with them. Wow, that's a good word. That's a good word. Amen. Not just came in worship. That isn't even in my message, but that because he's showing me right there. I wrote it down right here. Stop trying to bring people where God has it because I saw that. And when we get into this, and it's not about being selfish. It's about being and doing what God, believe me, God's not about being selfish, but there's someone else that needs you, and you're wasting your time on the wrong person. All right. Preaching. Preaching. And what are you supposed to say? And all of a sudden, spirits come. i seen Sunday night spirits jumping from one person to another because, you know, you open the door to everything and anybody when you have a special speaker. And all of a sudden, I see people that I know, and anyway, acting different, and they don't even know what happened. Because they're so open. And then some are so closed with fear, they don't let anything happen. Wow. We need to, to, to get this. Ezekiel, let's, let's see what God says about false visions. Ezekiel 12, 21 through 28. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that you have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? Tell them. Do you know that the vision fell? Because if, I don't care what's happening in America. It says you have a prophecy. You know how many doors are going to be shutting their, to all these so-called congregations of the, uh, 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 of the saints are going to be shutting their doors because of the economy and stuff? Then it ain't God's vision. God doesn't need the world to, to run his kingdom. God doesn't need the... The economy to be good, to have a church That's thriving. Right. God doesn't That's need right. man. God just needs a people that are willing to believe Him, Amen. trust Him, Amen. and He's going to be showing a lot of people about it because it wasn't God's vision. But if it's God's vision, it doesn't happen overnight. If God gives you a vision in 1980, it might take to 1995 to see it come to pass. 
But it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. And a lot of people aren't going to want to wait because people don't like to wait. But God is doing a, do, going to be doing things to, to, to get it all in. It's, 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 it's manifesting by the Spirit the whole time. Yes. Take a look at them that the two in the land and the whole next generation that came after them. They went around and, and, and around and around. And they died in the wilderness. They all had a vision, right? There's a promised land. Right? Come on. Come There's on. a promised land, but they didn't get there, right? They had a vision, but they stopped looking at the vision. And they started looking at each other. And they started knowing the man by the flesh. They didn't see Moses as a mighty man of God anymore. Right. They saw him as Moses. The troubling. Uh, they started seeing Moses. Oh, I can't believe we're following this guy. Uh -huh. Look, we're, we can't get it right. We're this and that and all the... Instead of believing God and what he's doing. And God, let's read some of that right now. So then let's... Right now. The Ezekiel 12, 22, 20. And tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb of Israel. And I will say to them, the days are at hand. And the effect of every vision... For there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of God. For I am the Lord, and I will speak the word that shall speak shall come to pass. It shall no more be prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word and will perform it. Saith the Lord God, again the Lord of the word of the Lord came to me, saying, 26, Son of man, behold, they, the house of God, the house of Israel, his bride, the vision, his churches, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and prophesied, prophesied it in the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. That's what the awakening. Then we commit to God's vision. There's been, uh, moving in the power of God. That's His vision in the churches. Being people being restored. If you look at Acts 26, 18 through 20, he was talking about this. He said this: Open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive. Forgiveness of sins and
That's what religion does. And they feel good. Oh, I have trying. No. Even, great thing, that movie was awesome last night. Mm -hmm. But imagine someone like you or me going in front of that class and saying, well, here's my record. Here's what I look like on drugs. That's how I prove God's real. Okay. Amen. What about that? Yes. Hmm. We love all this religious stuff. It's time for change. God says it's time for change. Amen. We get so in, it's great, it's great. It's going to touch the intellect. It was great. I loved it. It was awesome. And, we're, and, and there's a certain group of people that are going to get fed. But man, you know, what about all the religious parts in it? Why didn't that girl just cry out to God and humble herself right there? Why were they scared to let her do that? Mm. And be baptized in the Holy Spirit right then? Mm. And right there? Oh, because of fear of man. Yes. So why are we so afraid of the world? Amen. The one, the reporter girl, right? What is she? Boom! Let the Holy Spirit hit her. Okay. <laughs> Go in that, change her whole thing, then change the story. And all of a sudden, her go to the doctor, and there, I'm, I'm healed. Amen. It's still this, yes. this, this religious that we bow down to. Mm -hmm. And God, good, yeah, it's good. Yeah, there's always something good going on that we can say, attribute, it's going to help someone. But there is a perfect way. And Jesus' power is in the perfect way. Hallelujah. It's going to bring repentance. Not, hey, one for God, okay. We're not in a battle with flesh. We're in a kingdom. That's the problem. We go to church every Sunday morning and they're still trying to prove that God is real. Amen. If you don't know he's real, you shouldn't even be sitting in the pew anymore. Amen. Amen. It's time for the power, yes. resurrection power back yes. in the church. Yes. Amen. And it's not that God's meant. But this is what happens when we start allowing the enemy in our midst. Yes. And then, that's just it. And it's great, you know, but they're always, it's like, so it's, it was, it's awesome. The, the, the girl that stood, that was the most powerful part was that when that girl stood up in her home, yeah. that's happening all over the world. Yeah. That's the power of God right there. Yes. You know what it took her to do that? If people realize what Christians are doing in other places for their faith. And in America, they can't even mention in their Jesus, colleges. Come on, Jesus, the name of Jesus. But God is raising up people that aren't going to just try to prove them by some... In the Bible says stay away from philosophies and arguments. He says all that stuff, all it brings is contention, division, and strife. Amen. He said represent the power of God and you're going to see people change. Amen. I didn't know where all that came from, but <laughs> I do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We need Him fully manifested, and that's what God's doing, and that's the promised land. And you know what? The grapes and all. Let's get back to the heavenly. So in Numbers, okay, now here's the part I got this morning. So everyone, you know, we can say, oh, God, you feel. No, we're, we're living. But you know what? God's going to confirm what He's doing in our lives through the Spirit. Amen. And you know what? We've all been struggling. We've all been wrestling because God is doing a work in us. He's putting us through the fire. This flesh has to go Amen. to manifest what we're talking about right now. That's why we got to hear these messages. Yes. That's why we have to <laughs> obtain to the Holy Spirit. That's why we have to go through a week of hell in our life. And no one even knows what we're going through. That's why even Joseph had to go 12 years in the Pentecost to get to let him know and let him see the faithfulness of God. Amen. To sit on that place and represent God in the right way. Yes, amen. All of us are ambassadors of a kingdom. So we can't hang out in religion and expect to represent a God in the world through religion. Amen. Yes. Amen. In Numbers 13, 1-15, and, and the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that reach the land of Canaan, which shall give unto them the children of Israel, of every tribe of their father shall send a man. Isn't it funny? God delivered them out of Egypt. He could have just brought them in the promised land. God delivered us out of the world. He, we could be perfect, right? We're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Come on. That's what 
with that one false grace. Oh yeah, we got it. Okay, then why are you such a nasty person half the time? We don't. We have this flesh, and this flesh, and God's that those that say, okay, God, yes, I will. We don't like it either. So we think we're regressing because God's just showing us more. We we're like, well, when we first got saved, you know, we had the honeymoon and everything was great. Oh. And then he started going through the fire. We're like, oh, what's that? You know? And that's why we better not start looking at one another because whatever you got going on, someone else has got going on. And if you're still looking at one another, you're still not dead because what? We're still a mess in the sense of, and you know what? That's why the thing is, no, no, man, my flesh, you got it. We got to see you. People by the Spirit of God. Because if we see people by the flesh, we'll count everybody out. That's what they did when they picked David. They were looking on the outward appearance of David. They weren't seeing. Samuel was looking with the eyes of God when he picked David. And when God picked you, he was looking through his own eyes, going to and fro there, and he already chose you. Okay. And he wants you to go into the promised land. Come on now. It is not our job. There's only one Joshua and Caleb. You just come along and do what God's calling you. And if you're a forerunner, then you go and do it. But at the same time, we're all going over. We have we can't be killing each other in the wilderness. Okay. Please. The enemy's the enemy. And that's what happens in the murmuring and complaining and all these things that happen with the, with the tribe. Of, with, with, watch this. And Moses, by the command of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Aaron. All these men. So then I'm going to, for the sake of time, skip down. He had all, each one of these persons represented one tribe. And there was 12 of them. Caleb represented one tribe and Joshua. So they were, and there was 10 other of, of them. So they had like groups and they had orders. So, and there was like little uh, cell groups in the church, whatever you want to call them. These were because there were so many people there. Had a, there was even order in the wilderness. And Moses was the one that would go up, and they still, and, and, and watch this. So we have all those tribes, right? So in Numbers 13, 19, and when the land that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, in the cities they had that, that dwell in it, whether in tents or in, strong, or in strongholds. Boom, there's your key, strongholds. Okay. That's what's stopping us Jeez. from taking the land. And in that land, the milk, the honey, the grapes, it's, it's the fruits of the Spirit. When we're fully have all the fruits of the Spirit, that means the fruits of the flesh are gone. Okay. And that's when we are in the perfect rest in the promised land, when everything we ask, we have it. When the kingdom and, and everything that God wants to do... And it's like, yeah, I got. The, we all got some fruits that are stronger than others. Some can handle people or very long suffering people. It's good. We got a bunch. But God wants us love, joy, peace, long suffering. All those things are going to be our daily. They're going to be everything in the spiritual, everything in the natural. In the Old Testament, is a spiritual thing in the New Testament, and that's that's in the promised land. That means that's what we're going to eat from the tree of life there, and 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 operate, and then fully. The hope of glory in us when we're joy, peace, on You're dead because those are the things that dead men obtain. Okay. The flesh, go read the works of the flesh in Galatians. Mm -hmm. That's what we're That's battling awesome. still. And it's good. So we're saying, no, well, of course, we, if we could do it on our own strength. But you know what? we don't. We got to stop beating ourselves up and then looking at others on their failures and start, seeing, start believing again. In the promised land. Because we, we start to look at... That's what they did. Watch this. And they returned from searching the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregations. So these 12 came back. That's why God wants us to have godly discipline. Of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh. And I'm in uh, Numbers 13, 25-33. And they told him and said, We came unto the land, whether thou sentest us, or surely it flows with milk and honey. So in other words, and God's given us all glimpses, dreams, visions. He's given us, you know, little hope. And he's even revival me, something that we're, you know, just even, you know, being so on, on the mountain where you could do anything and say anything. That's where we can live 24 hours a day. 
That's his plan for our life. Nothing moves us but his spirit. Isn't that an awesome promise? And he told him, and he said, Come unto the land, whether they sent us, us, surely it flows with milk and honey, and the fruit of it. Nevertheless, people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anakim there, and the Amalites dwell in that land in the south, and the Hittites, and, and Jezebites, and the Armenites dwell in the mountains, and Canaan, and so on and so on. And, they, and the still before Moses, he said, Let us go up once and possess it. For we well able to... And then Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Caleb was the only one. He said, Let us go up and we can overcome it. But the men that were went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Don't let the strongholds in your life Bring, dis, dis and all where God wants to take you. That's what the enemy's doing. That's what the strongholds in our life are there to produce from the enemy to stop us from taking the land. The land, the battle is in the mind, right? So everything that is stopping us is our own mind, okay. our own thinking, our own strongholds, what we really believe. And God says, if you don't believe what He believes for you, it's unbelief, which is sin. Amen. So the enemy can get you to not believe what God's called you and who you are in Christ. Then all of a sudden you're in sin and you don't even know it. That's one of the worst things, God. And you're doing everything right, leaving people to do anything around you. And you just don't understand why you got no peace. Because you stop believing and you just stopped, and you started just doing, just being a Christian. I got to go to church on Sunday. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. And God said, no, you need to start believing and start taking the land in your mind as you, and I see it, as you take out your own strongholds, in, and, and then all of a sudden God starts using you in this world to take out and take the land and be what he's called you to be with the vision, either part of the vision that he has you in or a vision that he might launch and give you one years to come. And you'll have to tarry. We're all not in the same place. But when God is in, there's a whistle in his will. And when we get in that, it doesn't even matter. We're like, and then when he shows us something, when we're in his will, we just know, okay, I'm going. Let me, let's take care of this thing. It's not... Oh, God, I want to give up. I'm going to... We all go to this. Like, no, that's what the enemy wants us to think and do. And we can't focus on anyone else but us. Because when we start focusing on others, then all of a sudden we stop seeing the things that we need change because we might be way ahead of somebody else. Big deal. Doesn't mean anything. If they're called to go over and to the promised land in their mind... And there's also a church that's going over too. Then it's going to happen. It doesn't matter. Not everybody was on, in the same uh, age group walking, but they all believed. That's the one thing they had in common was that new, that next generation. They believed, and they followed. They went in with uh, Joshua and Caleb. They believed no matter what. They didn't just agree with everyone else. They believed God and His report. All right. And that's what we need to do in our life. And then he starts speaking louder and stronger to us. And there we saw, it says, and, and, they brought, <clears throat> and they brought him evil report in the land which they had searched. And the children of Israel saying, the land they are, have gone and searched it. And the land that eat, eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And the people saw in the great stature. And the, there are giants there in the Anak, and which some giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. That's where we come and says, Do you know who's our daddy? It's the all God right. of all creation. Come and when on, we man. stop knowing that and thinking that, and believe the enemy's report, then we're already beaten down in our own mind, and there's nothing we can do. Faith cannot manifest when fear is, is overtaking us. Fear is the biggest sin that stops us from getting and going where God has us to go. 
14. In Numbers 14, 2 through 3, it says this. And all the children of our Israel, we see this all the time. That's what's plaguing. It's like little cliques. And, and Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, against the whole con, everyone there. And said unto them, would God that we had died in the land? We do this all the time. We start murmuring yes, against our yes. boss. On, it's sir. our boss. Do you know that God has you right where you are for a purpose? Because it's not about that. Or he had you <laughs> working for the sweetest, nicest person in the world. You were there to kill our flesh. So we say, you know what? When that's affecting me, I guess I'm not dead yet, God. Because I know. Look at what Joseph went to, and all of them, even the ones in the garden, all the places that they were. So then we say, okay. So the enemy gets us to focus on our boss. Or f they were focusing on Moses, because, you know, Moses, let him take all the heat for everything that's not going right, because cause we don't want to hear from God. We'll just admit, let him hear from God for us. And so if anything goes wrong, we can just blame it on him. Okay. <laughs> we do that all the time in the church. And people, some are listening to someone that wasn't a Moses. And there's actually some guy on TV that wasn't ordained by God. And you know what? It doesn't make, when they make an excuse, well, that's their own excuse. Why? We're going to find out right now. So watch this. So the Lord brought us to the land to fall by the, so now we're complaining. Did we just come on out here to die by the sword that our wives and our children should pray? God, remember when they came over, the, went through the Red Sea, and they were enslaved and bondage, getting whipped all the time, carrying bricks all day, but they had leaks and they were all big deal. And you know that, that's what's happening right now in the church. They're in a prison, they're in bondage right now okay. in the world, because they're so, they don't even know they're being entrapped, because they're going to end up with the mark of the beast if they don't come and go through this wilderness and, and find out who their God is by power. And they just think it's all great because they, they tasted and went over, but they went back into Egypt. Mm. Back, It's not easy to stay in the wilderness till God brings us. But you know what's happening in our wilderness? We're learning how to trust Him. That's where the testing is. That's where the trials are. That's where He's seeing. Who's going to turn back? Oh, believe me. You can go back to your... Oh, I see so many people leave a job... And end up going back to that job. No, God told him, but he didn't say go to the job and it's going to be the best thing in the world. Just go where he tells you to go Amen. and trust Amen. him. Amen. Oh, but this was a twice as much paying job. So then we start playing our mind. No, that is, that's a spirit of rebellion. Amen. Oh, but I make twice as much money there. And then we start, well, God's a good God and he's love. And he said, he's, and we, can, we do that all the time with whatever situation. God's not looking for them. He's going to leave them in the wilderness. Come on, Shane. He's going to take us. They say, you know what? It's tough. But God, I know I heard your voice. And I don't care if it's tough. I know where you told me to be. I know who you told me to be connected with. I know the nation you told me. And it's funny. It's even when the best thing happens, you think nothing's going to happen and God shows up the most in your life. Amen. Just like last Sunday night. I was like, oh, bro, so did you think I was even supposed to call this meeting? Because I just felt like nobody wanted to come. And God was powerful. He showed up. A guy was, t t uh, mindset of a 10-year-old was shaking on the floor for over an hour. I mean, it was amazing. But in my mind, the enemy was already messing with me. We need to shut him down. That's right. By obedience and by the sufferings that we go through to make us, by the trials that we go on for, are not to kill us. He doesn't want us to die in the wilderness. He wants to get the old, he wanted to get Egypt out of them. Believe me, they were grew up in it. They had idolatry mindsets all around them. They were doing stuff in that anyway. They, believe me, there was things that they would do for those slaves to keep them content, believe me. Numbers 14, 8 through 16. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. So what is he saying? If the Lord loves us and the Lord surely said us, he'll do it. So that's our problem. We start, start to think on our own strength. How am I going to build this thing? How am I going to do this? And how, you know, Noah did it, but he didn't do it in his own strength. He got the blueprints from God. He said, no, I got to use this wood. This might be lighter wood to carry 10, 10 miles, 
But God called for this wood. I'm not going to start to question God. God, why shit of wood? This is twice as heavy. <laughs> you want wood? Let's just build it. And that's what churches do. And compromise. Compromise. Yeah. It's because God told Moses. Okay. God told Noah it's to be this way. Yeah. And that's what we need to start doing. Trust what he's doing. It might not make sense in our little pea brain heads. Amen. But God's looking for us to just come along and say, yeah, I'm going to trust it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put all my forward because I know. And I've seen the power of God, and I know his voice, and I know by the Spirit. I'm not judging any man by the flesh. My goodness, there'll be nobody because we all are. We need to stop judging people. Nobody's perfect. That's Moses wasn't right. perfect. Right. And they started looking at his imperfections instead of looking at who and what and God called him and he was seeing God face to face and he's the one that went against his whole culture he got grown up in Egypt he had to come against everything he knew and, and was brought up because God spoke to him and then he had to face his old father or whatever Pharaoh was to him and then in that time he didn't say well you know and stand up to all that stuff and they didn't look at all that. Who else would have done that? Okay. And then they all want to start talking about him. Now they forget. That's what we forget. We okay. start thinking, oh, you know, God told me to sell this or that car. But, man, remember, we said, because he's doing something to that. Amen. He wants you to know him <coughs> in that realm. For when you get in the promised land, you're there and you're not going to go back. That's right. Oh, it's so good. So what we're going through is only to get us to where he wants us. What Joseph went through all right. was all ordained by God. Amen. What you're going through is all ordained by God if you're obeying him. Now, if you're trying every minute you get to go here or go there and make an excuse here and do this and that, well, then half the storms you're facing are caused by you. Okay. But if you're in a storm that God's bringing you through, it's to bring faith in you, just like on the boat. He sent them right into the storm. Jesus said, let's go. You don't think he was, he's God in the flesh, didn't know there's a storm coming? Goes to sleep to test them. Let's see where they're at by now. I've been walking two or three years. I've been telling them, imparting faith to them. Okay, they're not ready. But they learned through that. Hey, if he and Jesus taught to it. He's teaching you through the things you're suffering and going through as well. Amen. It's an awesome thing. God is with us. God didn't promise us a rose bush, a beautiful house, and a mansion, and a and a, a Joel Osteen prophecy in our life when we got saved. He promised that those who believe me will suffer persecution. He said those that follow me have to pick up their cross, deny All themselves. Right, come on, those man. that follow me, it's not going to be easy, but here's the kingdom. And he said, these are the promises that I'm going to be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm going to be there with you. Even when it seems like I'm nowhere around, I'm right there with you. Amen. Don't believe the enemy. Amen. I'm not going to preach this world to you. I'm not going to lure you by this world. I'm trying to take you out of this Amen. world. Amen. So when you go in this world, you're full of power and light. That's right. And that's what's going on. There's so much mixture. Nobody knows what God's really saying anymore. But he's saying the same thing he said 2,000 years That's ago. Right. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Raise the dead. Pick up your cross. Deny yourself. And everything you give up for me, I'll give it back to you. And you will have a more abundant life. Because you can't have a real abundant life if your, your abundance is on... The works of the, is on, on the flesh. Your abundance is going to come by the Spirit. Peace, joy, yeah. righteousness in the Holy the Ghost. Holy Ghost. And that's you. it. Good word. Now, if the Lord delight in us, we will go. That's what we're going to do today. Only re rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear, yea, the people. Don't. Fear the people that aren't going with us. They are bred for us. Their defiance is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. We don't want this to happen. I'm not saying we're going to all die next week. But we can end up not going to where God called us to because of fear. He says this Lord is with us. Fear not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. and So now everyone was coming. That's what's going on right now. Those that really want to go to the promised land. 
They're going to talk about you. The, those stones are like, oh, who do they think they are? They think they're better than us. Why do they always, why don't they come? We got a mega ministry. Why do they got to go over here? What, what are they doing? It's like, what do they think they're better than us? That's what people say in their hearts all the time. They don't have to say anything. And then they speak to one another. They might not even say nothing. The biggest persecution going on right now is the silence you get from people you really feel you could have a connection with. Oh, people that you could sow into their life. They don't say anything because they know they have nothing to say because everything you say or are doing is righteous and true, but they just shun you. Just like the Amish, just like the Mormons. Shunning the people just because they don't do exactly what they say. Well, we don't shun in the body of Christ. We love. Okay, Amen. anyway. Come on now. Anyway. Only rebel not against the Lord and fear not. But all the congregations thrown stones at them, and, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle and before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will they? And so Moses is going, uh, going on with them. He says, I don't want to, but uh, for a second time, I've got to skip forth here. And the Lord are among the people, and the Lord is seen face to face. So they're talking about in the cl cloud by day and the fire. Now, if thou shalt kill all the people, and right at the end it says it's because the Lord was not able to bring his people into the land which he swore unto them. Therefore he said he slain them in the wilderness. Some of us are going to go to church our whole life and never see the power of God, never see the glory, and never be the glory come out of them. Because they're stuck in the wilderness. And God doesn't want that. Numbers 14, 24 through 30. But the, my servant came. My servant, just say your name right now. Trevina. My servant, shame. Because you had another spirit. And with you, you have, not fought, you have followed me fully. I will bring you into the land. Which he sent, went, and his seed shall possess it. Hey. And the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley tomorrow and turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And I spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron. And he said, How long? So he says, You'll go. How long? This evil congregation. Now, this is God talking about the people he delivered okay. once again. So come on now, Shane. Which murmured against me. Mm. And I have heard their murmurings. Mm. And we got to remember, when we want to start complaining about this, remember this right here. Don't do it. Because you're going to go through another round around the mountain. And it might not be so much like that. But there's a reason that this is all here. It's for us in the That's spiritual right. realm now. In the, 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 the timing after the cross, the spiritual. This is all there to say to us, hey, here's... here's your salvation, the promise, mind, body, and soul. You're going to heaven. And right now, there's a promise that I have right here on this earth. Do you want it? And God's saying, because I, I'm not just, you just can't get it overnight. Because why? It brings relationship. It brings dependency. It makes you depend on God and not yourself. You start looking to the spirit instead of the flesh. You start believing God instead of people. You start looking at God for your resources instead of man. You start trusting God is going to put the bread on your table. All these things. And God's going to do that through us because He wants us to be so full of Him yeah. that we know, and we know we all, but God's mercy is so awesome. Mm -hmm. And He knows where we come from, what drugs, everything that we've come out of, and He's working it all together. And He knows exactly who to put around you that's going to intimidate you or is going to make you feel something to get something out of you. He's working all things together for hey, His good. Hey, hey. And whatever the enemy has in store for bad, God will turn around for good. Amen. He is on the throne. Amen. So we, that's the biggest right there is to keep Him on the throne and stop putting our problems or our situations Amen. on the throne. Amen. And He said unto them, Truly I live and say it, the Lord has spoken in my ears. I will do it. And it says, you skip all the way up. You want to read that later. It's read Numbers 14, 24 through 38. And I'm going to skip along here. So they wandered in the wilderness. There's some key things I got here. It says, Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb. Doubtless they shall not come and say this. And concerning, they swore to make. We've all heard this, right? But there's another twist coming right now. In the wilderness, 40 years and and the men which Moses sent to search the land and return and made. So we all, so here we go. 
Let's find out what, 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 what are these giants in the land? What is the Bible? They all have a significant thing. The Lord showed me this morning. Even those men that did not bring up the evil report upon the land died in the plague before the Lord. They didn't even speak it forward, but just because they followed those that were speaking the negative report, they died with them. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jesson, 38 verse, which went of the men that went to search the land. God gave them a vision. He didn't tell them what did. It's not, God's not asking you or me what we're capable of doing with our resources, with our weapons, with our faith, with our. He's asking to trust Him and get the Egypt out of us. Amen. So we can enjoy the promised land. Amen. And sometimes He even sends the enemy against each other. We don't even have to do anything. That's right. Go read the Old Testament where, and they just march around these two. Because he's supernatural God. And that's what's going on all around America is everybody's got a church. Don't you know what it says in the, in the Bible? And, and all through it says, even the widows, there are certain rules. Even that we, we, we take one word and we just do whatever. Do you know that it says these busybodies, those that do not work and don't eat, you don't even give them. People say they're Christians all the time. They want to pray with you. They're, they're drinking and, and, and they're homeless, but they don't want to get a job. Okay. And the Bible clearly says, I even was going to start that today, but we'll go ahead and read. I trashed it in the garbage because I don't want to get confused. It's right in Timothy. It says these are busybodies. They work not with their own hands. They eat them. It says you don't help them. In America, that's what's going on. God's not going to bless you. It doesn't care you. You're feeding the homeless. All, all you're doing is feeding that spirit. God doesn't want that. He wants you to go to, to Nicaragua or Africa or Mozambique or wherever and where they have and they're working and they're scrapping not because they don't want to work, because the government, they're under such an oppression that it's not their choice. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If people want to choose to be lazy, because if they really choose God and they really get born again and they really follow Him, they're, I never see the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Right. They're not giving in. Let them be in the wilderness. Maybe your help is actually stopping them from coming to, to rock bottom. Okay. Because right. okay. the Bible says it. But we do it all the way. The whole, and they're just like, and the devil's like, oh yeah, they're going to stay out. Keep bringing them a couple dollars, their beer. Every day. This one guy bring, oh, oh, oh yeah, the Lord led me every day to give them a dollar. No, that was you. Misled compassion. Mm. I'm telling you the truth. We need to we'll move in the Spirit. This word, if you start really reading it, love is real, man. It's about really loving, loving someone. You, you, might, it might, you might just have to just give them a hug and tell them the truth and say, you trust God, He can get you out of anything. Tell them your story, whatever. That's what love is, not being selfish with your time. Speak to them. Not just give someone. That's what we do. And we fill. And then the church, every son of these churches all around, they fill the house with all these people with spirits. And the Bible says that there be a fornicator, money, a reveler, an idolater, a drunkard. Have no. Do not preach the word with them or even be around them. So we're being rebellious in the church. Because when the church really starts being the church, they're going to say, wow, I need to make a change. Because I'm not accepted in the world. I gave my life to Christ. And you see how much different things will start being? But nobody believes the word. It's all this lovey-dovey gospel in America. It's not the gospel at all if it doesn't line up with the word. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It's the truth. The eight, watch this. So these are the things that stop us from going to the promised land. I'm finished. And they're spiritual. Self-recognition. Sorrowful self. Self-pleasure. Self-deprivation. We all, we are all, we all need help in these areas. But today we're going to say, God, do it, because I don't want to be stuck in this. I want to see Your glory. Just think this: the glory is not here, but we know it is. But it's in the promised land, fully manifesting wherever you go. God's not going to. God will use anybody, in anything, but He wants to use you full time in everything and everywhere you go. Self-deprivation, self-importance, pride. Now watch this. The Philistines means, know what Philistine means? Wallowing. Canaanites means influential to the world. It's all up in the church. Influential to the world. So connected to the big wigs in the world. The church, oh yeah. They're all in California doing that. Merchant trafficker. Worldly king. 
Sid Sidonian, these are all the, the, the giants that were in the land. The Sidonians, anger, lust, jealousy, contention. The Hivites, false humility. The Hittites, the largest group, derived from Heth, the son of terror. Fear, control by fear. These are things that they were looking at that would stop. They, these are all spiritual things that we have to look at. The Amorites, self-boasting, hypocrisy. They do everything, they say everything right, they boasting, but they're, they, they're not doing it. The Perizzites, same, meaning the Hivites, always down, playing oneself. Some boast, some down, play. So they're always, it's like false humility. They're always talking their self down. Oh no, that's Heidi Baker do that, but I'm just, you know, a little old me. Well, that's what they're saying. We're just grasshoppers, you know. We're not looking at who God is, and He chose you. That's, they're all spirit. They're all strongholds. They're not spirit, but their spirit's connected to them. And we got to break them in our life, and the truth sets us free. Amen. And the Jezebites, unforgiveness, offenses. We, we, these are the little foxes that will stop us from, from getting into that promised land, eating from that, all those things. And we know when we're fully manifesting in love, truth, joy, peace, the enemy has nothing on us. There's nothing we can't do. He's got nothing to pull us out of that secret place because we all can manifest in those nine roots once in a while when we're really in the spirit. We've all done it. We've, and, you know, there's some things we really got. You know, it just depends what the Lord is moving on you. But he wants us to have all of them. And here I'm going to tighten up. I'm going to cap it up right here and we're going to pray. Two things to remember. God said that He would use those nations to test Israel. All those things. And to teach the warfare to Israel. So firstly, there is a test. What exactly was the test? Well, we read at the end of chapter 2 that the nations remain in order to test Israel by them, whether they keep the way of the Lord, to walk in it as their fathers did not. Judges 22, 2, 2, 2. In other words, the nations remained in the land and God used them to see whether Israel truly had a heart for Him. That's all it's about. Does God really have your heart? God used them whether Israel had a heart for Him or whether they would give in to the temptations of the other nations, which is the works of the flesh. It's the devil's kingdom. Follow their gods, little g. So let me ask you, what enemies remain in your life? Are you given to Hittite fear, or Philistine self-wallowing, or Canaanite worldliness, or Amorite hypocrisy? We are all different in such. We all have different areas of weakness. But like Israel of old, the Lord will test us to see our hearts are truly for Him. The testing of the Lord is through the various trials and the enemy we face. Has another, uh, has another often unseen benefit that is like Israel of old. The Lord uses it to teach us warfare. The battleground may be shifted from Megiddo plans and within our mind, but the battle's in our mind. The first fight itself that is, is just as real. The Lord leads us, needs us to teach us warfare. It is something we all have to learn. As we live and grow as Christians, notice also that the Lord was kind enough with Israel to even use the terrible situations that they had got themselves in for their own good. Remember I said God used all things together for His good? He didn't give up on them. And He doesn't want to give up on us or you. Even if we've blown it time and time again, He'll give us another try. Amen. Amen. He'll teach us through the testings. The Israelites lived among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Pezrites, the Hitchites, the Jesuits. They took their daughters and gave in marriage. And they even scorn on the church all the time now. <laughs> Unyoked with unbelievers. Daughters and sons and served their little gods. Finally, we read in the passage of Israel disobeyed the true God through the intermarriage and with their enemies' daughters. Something they were not allowed to do. So breaking commandments, breaking little things. God told me to do this, but you know, His grace. I'm just going to do it. 
He told me to do this or say this. We go through all this. We need to, and you know what? That's all it is. Man, when God's got your heart, He's got your mouth. When He's got your mouth, He can do anything through you. Is there compromise in your life? Commands of God that you have declared to be your own and you not follow them through? Have you made... <clears throat> we must do this. Right now, let Him show us. But you know we have victory in the cross. We're overcomers by the blood of God and the word of our testimony. That's what God's saying. All of us got issues. Maybe we got every one of those things still. Boom, boom. In our, but we, we came out of the big one, the drugs or the, the control, you know, the bondage. And, you know, we, we finally given and we got letting God strengthen us. But now he wants to work on our character because he wants us to have godly character. And, and the church wants us to have character of, 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 of the world and mixed with, they just got this whole little concoction going on. But God has a pure bride, and He's got, and He's saying to us today, everybody stand up. And then I'm going to play that song, Whistle in His Will. And I didn't even get to these two things, but what happens when we don't want to get to the promised land or allow God, we become mavericks, and we become renegades. And that means we're disloyal, we betray, we desert His causes. And that's what the enemy gets us to do. I can't do this. That's just too hard. Just look those up, Tim. So, Father, we thank you, God, that we're not going to look at no man, our brothers and sisters that you called to be together. We're not going to complain or see what's wrong with them when we have the, a beam in our own eye. But, Father, we're just going to pray for one another. We're not going to judge any man by the flesh, God, but we're going to ask you, Lord, to read us in our hearts, Lord, and we're just going to, we're going over. If it, if, if, if it, I don't care how long, that's our vision, and God's, and there's a vision for this house, and when God wants us to get in, in vision, His vision, because He's not, he, he can't be involved in 20 visions. Because that's only division in our own mind. The one earthly vision, he, the one spiritual vision he has for every person, though, is that one about being set free. That vision about being free, always moving in the nine fruits of the Spirit. And then when we're moving in the nine fruits of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit are just flowing. And that's where God's taking us. Where full power and manifestation come. So right now, just speak after me. If you believe it, and if you mean it. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. That you called us. That you called us. Out of Egypt. Out of Egypt. That you've done miracles. That you've done miracles. That you are. That you are. All sufficient. All sufficient. Everything we need. Everything is in you. Is in you. We thank you. We thank you. That our power. It's not in our own strength. It's not in our own networking. It's not in our own decisions. It's not in our own way. But it's in you. You're going to bring relationships. You're the one that's going to birth the power. You're the one that's delivering us. We have no, we have no confidence, confidence in, the flesh, in the flesh, but only in you. Only in you. We, know we know that you, that you love, us, love us and you want us, you want us into that place. Into that place. That's, the That's the vision that you've given us. That you've given us. That's the place, That's the place. you ordained for, for us. So we ask you now. Okay. 
Right now. Right now. In the mighty name, the mighty name of Jesus. Of Jesus. We, receive we receive your blood. Your blood. Your power. Your, power, your resurrection. Your resurrection. And, we speak it, and we speak it over our lives. Over our, over our minds. Over our, over our situations. It's not gonna, every day is not going to be easy. Sometimes you're going to want to give up. But he says, you keep remembering this message. And remember that you're a call and you're ordained. He says, let go of the past. Jesus. Right now, Father, we release the fire. Hallelujah. Shane and Elaine Rossiger and the Hawk family, thank you for giving us an honor to break the bread with all the saints of the body of Christ. Remember, be hot for him. For more information, log on to www.inhimpodcast.com.